All right. All right, all right. What's going on, party people? This your man Grill out here in the deep part of Chesapeake, Virginia, off of Beaver Dam Road. Um, way down here, man. Nice. It's real nice. Um, a lot of nice space. I like that. I like that. But just too far out for me, you know, trying to do. Oh, man. This Velcro thing keeps snagging my shirts and everything. I'm about to snip those things off. But, um, but yeah, I just wanted to chit chat with y'all real quick. Um, and for those of you who are new to the channel, you see me in my gear. I do house data inspections or data collecting. Go to my playlist um, called Groundworks. I've got a playlist called Groundworks. All the information you need to know or will want to know about it is over there. Okay. So I think all the information about the gear that I buy, everything is over there. Look at the Groundworks playlist. It's either Groundwork without an S or Works with an S playlist and you will see the videos up there and the contact information to how to get in contact with the people if you're interested in doing it for your state and they will provide you with all of that okay also so people because people keep asking i'm in virginia okay i'm in virginia that's where i am at that's where i live okay so i'm in virginia i've been doing this for over four years i got over 1300 signings under my belt and if you were interested in doing groundworks, look at the notary, look at the um, playlist, groundworks, and that will tell you everything you need to know about it, okay? I just put that out there because these are the questions that people keep asking, so let me get this up front so you don't have to be all in the chat asking, and then if I don't reply back, getting upset that I didn't ask it, that's what's been happening, okay? So that's why I'm addressing this now try to lighten that up a little bit um all right so hmm, big old piece of land for sale all right mr mike that's probably worth about a million <laughs> all right here's the deal i'm going to discuss i got a how many minutes here i got an 18 minute drive to my next appointment However, my next appointment isn't until two o'clock. So I still got, I got some time, but I'm gonna try to get this done and addressed in a time that I'm driving, okay? All right, now, I've gotten, through the whole time I've been on YouTube, I've gotten phone calls about this and I've talked to people individually about it. And then I've gotten, and I even did a video about the loan process about the whole process okay and at least i thought i was clear as to how the loan process works the question that keeps coming up over and over and over again is i you know people call me i got a phone call today it was a great question i like the way the guy asked um his vibe was like he didn't he was like it got to be more to it than what people are saying so that's why he was inquiring a lot of other people when they call they're calling because they're mad that the reality of what was told to them has finally set in that oh okay it's actually not like that so the gentleman that called me this morning he called saying hey before i really get into this i need to know is this reality and the question about what's reality is about these signing platforms, okay? About these signing platforms, and I have to throw in there even the signing companies themselves. There's this idea that's being pushed that once you become a notary signing agent, that the signing companies as well as the platforms or the platforms as well as the companies, whichever way you wanna slice it up, that they are laced and layered and just got in all of their clauses and cabinets all of these orders that need to be filled and they're just desperately waiting and looking for notaries to come out and, and you to come on and say I'm here and I can do these orders for you and they just can't wait till a new notary hops in here and they can just 
funnel you all of these orders and you just go out here and make all of this money. And many of you have discovered point blank that is not the case at all. Many people have been getting hooked up. They got connections. They got people who are letting other people know, hey, I got this new notary and you might want to throw them some work or whatever the case may be. Now, when it comes to the signing companies, and that can work more so with direct force, people throwing in a good word for you to let ABC title know that, hey, you need to call, you know, so-and-so and, and hook them up with some orders because I've been working with them and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, they're using their pool to get you work, okay? It does work. And it can work even with the signing companies if that person has a great reputation, okay? But if you don't have anybody that's out there that can, you know, vouch for you, then you're sort of on your own, okay? It's just that simple. You're sort of on your own. Oh, I missed my turn. I go this way. So you're sort of on your own for as getting work because nobody can vouch for you, okay? It's that simple. So, the mortgage industry is a cabillion dollar industry, okay? Cabillion is not a real word, that's just me making my own thing up. It's a billion dollar industry, there's a lot of work out here, there's a lot of money being funneled back and forth. And at the end of the day, they need notaries such as yourself and me to come out here to do these closings correctly so that this money can flow. Because without us, the money doesn't flow, okay? It's just that simple. If we don't close the loan, we don't do our part right, it doesn't flow. The misnomer is people think that just because you are notary, that these companies are just going to be funneling money to you, hand over fist, no questions asked. And that is not the case. They have standards, they have criteria, they have a business model, a plan as to how they want to conduct business, okay? And if you, based on your experience level, do not fit in to that realm, you are not going to get orders. It's just that simple, unfortunately. And now with all of these new notaries out here doing some very trifling things, that is not a good design on that house. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. They're doing all these trifling things. It is making these companies even more skittish, okay? Now, the next thing is this. You, a lot of people clearly do not understand the loan process, this whole mortgage process. I did a video talking about that and I'm going to talk about that here, okay? You need to understand that nothing happens unless there's a loan officer that can convince a consumer to refinance their house nothing can happen unless there's a consumer that wants to either sell their house and there's a buyer and that there's a buyer who has is convinced that buying this property is in their best interest the seller has to agree that the price being offered is in their best interest and the buyer has to be convinced that the price that they're being asked to pay is in their best interest so all of these factors got to be in place, in place, okay, before you even, as we say down south, even must, before you even must think about being a notary, sitting at somebody's table and closing a, and closing a loan. Now you can be a notary, but what I'm saying is for you getting the work it starts with the loan officer contacting a consumer. Now, here's the part that is baffling me. You have notaries out here that are in their mid thirties on up who have purchased stuff, bought homes, sold homes, and then now you are a notary signing agent 
and for some reason you have forgotten how this whole process works and now you want all of a sudden it to magically switch and be in your favor to just start giving you this work but if you understand the whole process of how a mortgage a house being purchased sold and refinanced goes you would understand that you can't have an order as a notary to close until everybody else over here or over there whichever side you want gets their part together you have no role in this except to close the loan when it's given to you to sit there and notarize the documents after you verify who they are put them in your law book that is where you are at in this whole process so you have no power and no influence prior to the moment you sit down with them or even the moment you get assigned the order to even change the process or accelerate the process or ensure that the process get you have no power no influence whatsoever as the notary because you in no way shape or form even know and I'm talking about we're going through signing companies not the direct because maybe you have a little more knowledge with the direct but through the signing companies you have no clue at all that this is even going down you don't know anything about any of these houses that I'm passing by that you can see out this little window that any of these people on in these houses are even thinking about doing a closing buying selling or anything you have no clue you don't know in any way shape or form and I'm emphasizing that because all of a sudden you get a notification saying there's this closing well it's been the process is taking four to five months now in most cases okay or some cases or a lot of cases however you want to look at it depending on your area around here I've been hearing people telling me it's been five months I've been I started this five months ago I told y'all about the other guy who went five months trying to get his mortgage closed after changing his mind with one company over to another company okay so it can take three to five months in some cases to get the loan closed and now you're saying well where's all of these orders at because they said on Facebook they said in Clubhouse they said in my notary training they said in these YouTube videos that there's all of this here work and I don't see it there's all of this work so why am I not getting selected and it was this way and just as a caveat people were saying this back in 2018 when I first started well before the pandemic so don't hop in the comments section talking about well see grip would you that yeah that what you saying but with this pandemic it's been you know it's all it's all you know oversaturated it it's all oversaturated with with these notaries and stuff that's what they were saying in 2018 and 2019 that it was oversaturated back then okay that's what people were saying back then in 2018 and 19 so as they say in the streets miss me with that and I'm not trying to be funny here but I'm trying to be very direct okay stop making excuses people have misled you people have lied to you people have given you wrong information you did not do due diligence you did not go and check you did not verify what the information they're saying is so you just took them at their word and they said oh this is how it is you can get all these orders because I'm getting this that and the other but you're in Texas they're in Kansas you're in uh, Mississippi they're in New York so forth so on 80% of the time if not more the person who people are listening to and they're saying this is what's going on for me and this is how good and for me they're not even in your state and I know that's why people keep asking well Griff what state you in because you're trying to figure out is what you're saying even applicable in my state and in some cases it could be and in some cases it may not be I can't determine that and I can't tell you that but what I can say is simply this there's a process and you need to understand the process 
and you need to remember the process that you went through with regard to buying your home, buying your car, all of that. Because again, as I said, and I'm backing back, I'm backing up to the issue, not even the issue, the whole process starts with who? The loan officer. The loan officer, it, and it's a tandem thing, the loan officer and the consumer, but the loan officer a lot of times is reaching out to consumers saying, do you want to refinance? The consumer has their tr the right to say yes or no. But see, even with that, even with the consumer saying, yes, I want to refinance, check this out. And maybe you don't know this, which I think you do, but the, re but the consumer, wow, they got to qualify. The consumer has to what? Qualify for the loan. So you are, you are with ABC Mortgage. And XYZ Mortgage says, hey, or even the same mortgage company says what? I want to I wanna, um, offer you a deal where you can refinance your property. But guess what? You don't qualify because, you're, because from the time you got your first mortgage till now, your stuff is all jacked up. You've been late 18,000 times. You owe this kind of money. You got 15 bankruptcies. You got all of this stuff going on with your background, with your finances, and now you don't qualify. So that 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 cuts that null and void. Ain't no, it ain't gonna be no closing in three, four, five months. Now you get in there. Now here's what can. This is what typically can happen. And this is what I've seen happen. And this is what I personally know has happened because consumers have told me this happened. And I've seen, and because of this, what I'm getting ready to tell you, I've seen people go ahead on and sign the paperwork for that loan. And I've seen people say, nope, I ain't doing it. They get a phone call. Hey, Fred. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Yeah. You've been a long time customer with us. Wanted to offer you the opportunity to refinance. I know you at four and a half percent, you know, when you first got the mortgage, the loan, but we can, but we can take you down as low as, know what I'm saying, as low as 2.8 percent, and we can save you up to, note what I'm saying, up to, okay, we can save you up to, okay, yeah, I got time, we can save you up to 250 dollars off your mortgage. What did Fred here? 2.8, save me 250. You go through the loan process, go and all of that, and Fred doesn't pay attention to the loan estimate. Fred doesn't really pay attention to the CD that he gets three days prior to closing. And come to closing, Fred sees this document, sees this document that says what? <laughs> Your loan, you got a 3.2 and you're only saving $125. Or well, let's say he sees it before and he gets his final CD the three days prior to and he's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. This isn't what I wanted. You told me 250 and 2.8. No, I said up to 250 and as low as 2.8. Well, that's what I wanted and I didn't get that. So I don't want to do this. These are the things that are going on out here unbeknownst to us unbeknownst to me and the only reason why i know about it is because consumers i'm sitting there and they just happen to just talking to me about their process and they're like hey yeah this is da, da, da. and i'm like oh okay so this is what's going on so notaries are being told you can make this kind of money because these companies got all of this work nobody is chomping at the bit no, no, there's no notary company and chomping at the bit means the, the bit that's in the horse's mouth and they chew ah, and they ready. They like, ah, yeah, yeah. If they are, they are looking for notaries who not going to be doing jacked up stuff. That's what they're looking for. And if you are a notary who's not going to be doing jacked up stuff, that's who they're looking for. But the bottom line is this. You cannot do a closing if there's no closing to be done. And in order to have a closing, oh man, look like I'm gonna be at a dang on warehouse doing this closing. Whew, I don't like that. I hate it when I gotta do 
at club at, at warehouses and stuff because a lot of times they don't be having no place to sit i got my cushion so i gotta turn around turn around every now and then all right let me stop playing but the bottom line is this if you all right yeah Ooh, the big trucks out here today if you plan on doing a closing there are so many moving pieces that have to be straightened out and put in place and correct before it even comes to you that's the bottom line of what i'm trying to get you to understand and hearing guessing this is the place and then on top of that you don't see any kind of address man where's there's no address <sighs> now this is the hard part of doing these signings at somebody's job and stuff because a lot of times in the warehouse district you don't even know where the heck you going the gps is telling you there but you know i still like to see an actual address so i'm hoping this is it i'm hoping all right well let me finish this up y'all and i'm and i hope i'm being clear and if i'm not being clear then say so and then i'll redo the video take this one down do another one whatever but the bottom line is simply this i know there's people out there who are saying all kinds of stuff that are making it seem like there's just all of this work and there is a lot of notary work out there as i said before in order for me to get 60 that means that i did last month 63 last month and then 60 or 61 the month before just imagine how much had to come out that i couldn't even respond to or that i didn't get selected for plus the ones that got canceled and then i still picked up enough to do 60 there's a lot of work out there but that's only because the process worked that they went through the process and then came to this day of we got these orders everything is in place but it's no guarantee that's the thing even if you're working with a title company directly there's still no guarantee check the time all right there's still no guarantee that in your area you're going to get any kind of work and take this off starting to get hot so i'm just trying to get y'all to open your mind look at this logically okay look at this logically and say this is the process this is how a mortgage gets done this is how real estate is sold this is how real estate is bought this is how houses are refinanced and when you understand that process then you'll understand and recognize and hopefully you'll accept the fact that there's nothing you can do to influence whether you get orders or not except to have a decent profile and when you do get an order you do great work but to get to the point of there even being a closing the deal has to be good for the consumer if and you remember you're a consumer also so if the deal isn't good for you as a consumer you're not going to do it. you go to the car lot and you sit there and you're looking at you just on the car lot and they say yeah we got this here 2000 you know 22 we got you know we just got the first 2022 corvettes or infinities or lexus whatever mercedes it doesn't matter and you're like okay cool but they want sixty five thousand for it and it's not whether and you're like ah that's that's not where i want to pay i want i want to pay 65 for it and if they can't make the deal something that's beneficial to you or at least to you make you think it's beneficial to you guess what you're not doing the deal it's that simple and you know this so on the consumer side of buying a house selling a house refinancing a house if the persons who are talking to them which is not you can't make that deal pleasing to them palatable to them then the deal's not going to get done and that's the main risk factor and that's why i'm talking about what is your risk tolerance if your risk tolerance for this kind of stuff is low then you don't need to be in this business. It's that simple. 
I understood that going into this based off of my experience with business and all of that, just understanding the mortgage process, not that I was some educated person or guru or I had some kind of special water that I drank that, <clears throat> that enlightened me. I just just from experience, just from life experience, I understood this also from just paying attention to what has been going on in my life. OK, if you're not paying attention to what's going on in your life, when you buy a house, when you sell a house and all of that, you just I just signed a paper. And I hear people say that all the time. I don't know what I did. I just signed a paper. I moved into a nice house and you don't know any of that. And you ain't been paying attention. Then now you into this here. You ended to being a notary to do loan closings. But you can't even reflect back on any of your past experiences So therefore, you're confused as to why the process is the way it is. The process has been like that. It really hasn't changed. Somebody wants to refinance. The lender talks to them. They say, cool. The consumer says, cool. The lender gets to the um, processor. The processor goes to the underwriter. The underwriter goes to the title. And then the loan closing happens. But at any point in time in that process, and there's a video, and when I get home later, I'll link it in here, or maybe I'll link it if I find time um, after the signing or before the signing or whatever. If there's an issue anywhere in there, I got a signing coming up tomorrow. The guy was supposed to close on Friday. Now he's now all of a sudden, and the notary who was having some technical difficulties probably couldn't print the documents or whatever. But that's what it sounds like. He said it was having some technical difficulties. So they might have ran out of paper, might have ran out of ink, might have ran out of toner. Didn't have the necessary. So if you if you got a dual tray printer or even a single tray printer and there's nothing wrong with your printer, then that means you did ran out of toner, ink or paper. It's that simple. Or you had a car issue and then the, then it got rescheduled for today. I mean, for tomorrow. So now I'm meeting them tomorrow, sometime tomorrow. I can't remember what time, but I'm meeting them sometime tomorrow. Sometime tomorrow. And the guy called me saying when I went to confirm and he wasn't there and he called me back. Now all of a sudden they're asking me for more paperwork. Why are they asking me for more paperwork? How can they ask me for more paperwork on today for a closing tomorrow when they said they were set to close on Friday? I don't know, sir. And I already sent the note back letting them know that he has that concern, said the appointment is confirmed, but he is concerned about this here factor as to why he's being asked to provide more documentation and doesn't know whether this is going to delay the loan. So you got all of this stuff going on here. Even to the last minute, and we have no control over that. We have no power or say so in that. That's why I say notaries are the most important, but the least powerful. And... When you understand that and accept that, it'll make it easier for you to manage doing this business. I'm not saying that you will ever, ever like it. It'll just help you to understand and manage the flow and how you do this. Once I understood that, I was like, okay, no need for me to get stressed. This is the process. I'm a part of the process, the last piece of the process, per se, somewhat. But I have no jurisdiction on anything that happens prior to me getting assigned and prior to me actually doing the closing i have no jurisdiction over in that what do i have jurisdiction over what i've been hired and asked to do that's why i'm so adamant about notaries just focusing on getting the loan closed get the loan closed and stop worrying about trying to be fancy in the daggone signing with all of your rhetoric and all of your fancy little scripts and stuff and just focus on doing the signing and getting the thing closed i don't have time for dealing this man is already stressed and then i come in there and then he's like and i'm sitting up here giving him a little mini dissertation over each and every document and he's already stressed over the fact that this process has taken my Look, you know, as I said over and over, my job is not to help them understand what they're signing. That should be that that's supposed to have already been done. And if you're in North Carolina, as I mentioned, and uh, many North Carolina notaries have been telling me offline that they can't even say anything outside of the title of the document. So that's why I'm saying people are making statements as if this statement they're saying is the way it is across the board. And here you got North Carolina notaries are saying, no, it's not. We cannot say anything outside of the title of the document. 
Same thing with what a person told me about New York. So I'm sitting here like, you got to be responsible as a notary signing agent to make sure you understand your law and abide by them. And you as a notary, whoever you are calling yourself today, trainer, guru, expert, mentor, you need to make sure that you put disclaimers out there concerning the information you're sharing. If what you're sharing is not definitively for everybody across every single city, state, county, suburb, rural area, what have you, then you need to say that. You definitely need to say that because people are starting to wake up and people are getting sick and tired of being told that they can do things. And then they come to find out that what you said to them is not applicable and you need to cut that foolishness out and you need to straighten up, fly right and be upfront and honest and let people know this is either my opinion. This is that this is where it works for me. This is how it is in my state. And please make sure you read your notary laws, this, that and the other check with the NNA. But you're not doing that. You're saying pay me money and I will teach you dot, dot, dot. And the stuff you're teaching doesn't work everywhere. And people are getting tired of it. I'm telling you, I hear the phone calls. The emails, the text messages, people are getting tired of being taken advantage of. And that's what's happening out here. And that's why there's so much confusion. And then that's why notaries are making so much, so many mistakes. And then the only thing left for the title companies, the escrow companies, the lenders and the signing companies to do is to tighten their requirements to to restrict who does closings for them. It adds, it puts more money in my pocket because it's like, okay, well, Griff, we know you cool, so we're gonna throw more work your way. Great, but I feel bad because there's notaries out there who are like, I'm not getting anything. And they don't spend money. And it's like, well, this is what I was told. This is what I was told. This is what I was told. I was told to do it this way. I was told to do it that way. And that way that they said they was told to do it ain't really the way to, and people ain't got time to be sitting up here. And this is another video I'm going to do later, probably after I leave this here. Nobody ain't got time to be sitting up here coaching you from a title company's perspective on the mistakes that you made. But that's another video I'm going to be doing when I finish this here signing and everything. So it'll be two videos back to back more than likely and all of that. But that's all I got to say on this. The bottom line is learn the process, trust the process, understand the process and make people show you receipts on what they're saying if you out there saying stuff you need to stop saying it as so definitive without providing receipts okay if i'm saying something and i may have misspoken let me know and i will get receipts or i will double check it and ch and fix it and say it correctly i have no problem doing that and y'all know i've done that multiple times okay it's just that simple but you need but you are responsible for your own business and you need to make sure that the information you're listening to, that the people are being honest with you. And if they're not, you need to leave them the heck alone. And those of you who are here just saying stuff to be saying it to get you get you some some paper because you're too lazy to do this business the right way. You need to cut this foolishness out because people are tired of it and they and things about to change, not just with the notary side, but also with these notary trainers, because people are tired of being taken and can't get their money back. That's all I'm going to say. Peace.